Howdy, partners, and good morning, boys and girls. My name is Miss Brittany, and I am your host. This is your teacher, Miss Valerie. Today, we will learn about the elements of a tall tale. Today's lesson is titled Pecos Bill. By the end of today's lesson, we will be able to identify tall tales as a type of fiction, identify the characters, plot, and setting of Pecos Bill, and identify exaggeration and larger than life characteristics of the tall tale Pecos Bill. Let's go ahead and get started. Let's review what we have already learned about tall tales. Remember that the characteristics of tall tales is that they are often set on the American frontier. The main character usually has an amazing or unbelievable childhood. The person usually has amazing adventures in life, and the tall tales have a great deal of exaggeration, which is part of what makes them humorous. In a previous lesson, we looked at the story, Paul Bunyan, which was a tall tale about an amazing lumberjack. He and his ox cut down entire forests with one swoop of the ax, and they are credited with creating many natural landscapes. Today's tall tale is Pecos Bill. The character Pecos Bill is a cowboy. Cowboys are men who work on a ranch or an area where cattle graze, and they take care of the cows. Cowboys and cowgirls were common on the frontier because many people raised cattle for food, sold their milk, or sold the cattle themselves to make money. In our story, we will hear that Pecos Bill taught other cowboys how to tame wild horses by riding them. Say that word after me. Tame. Tame. If something is tame, then it is not wild. It is trained to obey people. The pony learned to be tame by having people ride it. Miss Brittany, do you know of something that is tame? Um, yes, I do. My pet dogs are all tame because they are trained to obey me. That's a great example. Boys and girls, do you know of something that is tame? I'm sure you do. What's the word we've been talking about? Tame. Today we will add to the anchor chart behind us to demonstrate our learning. Notice the column on the left has the titles character, setting, and plot. A character is who or what the story is about. The setting is when and where the story takes place. And the plot is a summary of the main events in the story. And boys and girls, we've all, we have a row for realistic details and exaggerations. Realistic details are the details in a tall tale that could happen in real life. An exaggeration in a tall tale makes the main character seem larger than life. He or she is always bigger, stronger, smarter, and faster than real people. What do you see in this illustration? Remember that tall tale characters have amazing adventures, and this illustration hints at some of the adventures the cowboy Pecos Bill has. Pecos Bill lived in the area that is now the state of Texas. There is a river that runs in West Texas named the Pecos River. Today, as we read the tall tale about Pecos Bill, we want you to listen for examples of exaggeration as we find out what amazing adventures Pecos Bill had on the American frontier. Let's begin our story. The greatest cowboy that ever lived was the one they called Pecos Bill. Bill was born in East Texas and might have lived there forever. But one day his pa came running out of the house shouting to his ma, pack up everything we got ma. There's neighbors moved in near about 50 miles away, and it's getting too crowded around here. So Bill's folks loaded a covered wagon with everything they owned and headed west. It was a long, hard journey. 
The children were packed in the back of the wagon, all 18 of them. They fussed and hollered and fought as the wagon bounced along. The children were so loud that Bill's ma said you couldn't hear the thunder over the noise. One day, the wagon hit a rock and little Bill fell right out. With all the fussing and fighting, nobody noticed. The wagon just kept on going. So little Bill found himself sitting in the dirt along the banks of the Pecos River. And that's how he came to be named Pecos Bill. But that was later. Little Bill was not your average baby. He didn't cry. He just crawled along the dusty plain, keeping his eyes peeled for whatever came along. And the first thing that came along was a coyote. When the coyote saw this dirty, naked little creature crawling around on all fours, she thought he was a cute little animal, even if his ears were mighty small. Little Bill reached up and patted the coyote's head and said, Nice doggy. Miss Valerie, do you think that was real or an exaggeration? Boys and girls, what do you think? I think you're right, that was an exaggeration. Let's read on. The doggy, <laughs> I mean coyote, liked little Bill. She took him home and raised him with her pups. The coyotes taught Bill to roam around the prairies and howl at the moon. They taught him the secrets of hunting, how to leap like an antelope, and to run like the wind. They taught him how to chase lizards and lie so still that he was almost invisible. I remember seeing a movie once about a boy who was raised by wolves. Do you remember that story? I sure do. This story has a similar situation, but in this tall tale, Pecos Bill was raised by cow coyotes. I can't wait to find out what happens. The years went by, 18 of them to be exact, and Bill grew up strong and healthy. One day he was out hunting along the Pecos River when he saw a most unusual sight. It seemed to be a big animal with four legs. Or was it six legs? And why did it have one head in front and another on top? Well, it turned out to be a horse with a man riding it, something Bill had never seen before. Bill scurried around the horse a few times. Then he slowly crept forward and took a sniff of the man's boot. Boy, said the man, what are you doing scampering around down here in your birthday suit? His birthday suit? <laughs> yes, Miss Brittany. That's a humorous way of saying Bill wasn't wearing any clothes, just like an animal. Let's read on. Sniffing, said Bill. I'm a coyote. No, you ain't, said the man. You're a man like me. No, howled Bill. Coyote. What makes you think you're a coyote, said the man. I have fleas, said Bill. So what, said the man. Lots of men here in Texas have fleas. But Bill was not persuaded or convinced. He was sure he was a coyote. Here's the thing, said the man. Coyotes have pointy ears and big bushy tails, and you don't. Yes, I do, cried Bill. He felt sure he had a tail, just like all the other coyotes. He looked over his shoulder, but couldn't see one. He reached back to grab his tail, but he could not feel one. He backed up to the river and looked for his tail in the reflection, but it was not there. Bill was surprised. He thought for a moment. Then he decided, the man must be right. If he didn't have a tail, he couldn't be a coyote. If he wasn't a coyote, he must be a man. 
Bill decided he'd have to say farewell to his four-legged friends and try living as a man. He went to stay with the man who just so happened to be a cowboy. The man gave Bill some clothes to wear and a horse to ride. He also gave him a nickname, Pecos Bill. At first, Bill had trouble living like a man. He couldn't stand the way his clothes scratched and pulled at his skin or the way his boots came between his bare feet and the good old dirt. And he couldn't see the need for a knife or fork when it was just as easy to use your fingers to pick up your meat and tear it with your teeth. Miss Brittany, do you recall a detail that would help us understand why the man gave little Bill the nickname Pecos Bill? Hmm. I remember that he fell out of the wagon by the bank of the Pecos River. Could that be why? Yes, you're right. He was called Pecos Bill because the man found him near the Pecos River. Let's keep reading. Bill learned to act like a man, but he still had a spark of wildness in him, and it would flash out from time to time. One day he was out riding on his horse when he was surprised by a mountain lion. The mountain lion scared Bill's horse away and charged right at Bill. But Pecos Bill was too quick for that mountain lion. He dodged the big cat, then hopped right on his back. The mountain lion was not happy, no sir. He bucked, he snarled. He tried to twist around to bite Bill. Bill held onto the lion's neck with one hand. With his other hand, he waved his cowboy hat in the air and shouted, Yahoo! The mountain lion did everything he could to shake Bill off, but it was no use. Finally, he gave in and let Bill ride him. Then Bill put a saddle on the lion and rode him like a horse. Bill had tamed the mountain lion. Remember, that means Bill taught him to obey. Another day, Pecos Bill was attacked by a giant rattlesnake. This particular rattlesnake was a mean old fellow who thought he was the king of the whole desert. He struck at Bill's heel, but Pecos Bill was too quick for that rattlesnake. Pecos Bill grabbed the rattler by the neck and squeezed him hard. The snake wriggled and writhed in Bill's grip. Say, uncle, if you've had enough, said Bill. Uncle, said the snake, gurgling out the sounds as best as he could. Bill relaxed or loosened his grip a bit and asked the rattler, who's the boss around here? I was, said the snake, but now you are. Well then, Pecos Bill, said Pecos Bill, how do you like to work for me? Sure thing, said the rattler. The rattler just looked at Pecos Bill with admiration and purred like a kitten. Pecos Bill had squeezed all the meanness right out of that snake. Do you think Bill really squeezed all the meanness right out of the snake? Or is this an exaggeration? I think it's an exaggeration. Way to pay attention, Miss Brittany. Boys and girls, I hope you are paying attention too and noticing all these exaggerations. Now we'll continue reading. Next, Pecos Bill rolled the rattler up into a coil and rode away on his mountain lion. On the way back to camp, he spotted a runaway cow. He grabbed the rattler and tied a loop at one end of it to make a lasso. A lasso is a rope tied in a circle to catch a cow. Then he rode after the cow, swinging his lasso above his head. When he was close enough, he tossed the loop end of the snake over the cow. Pecos Bill jumped off the mountain lion and pulled the lasso tight, stopping the runaway cow right in his tracks. Pecos Bill brought the cow back to his friend, the cowboy. After that, he taught 
all the cowboys at the ranch how to use the lasso to catch a runaway cow. He taught them other things, too. He taught them how to tame wild horses by riding them, just as he had done with the mountain lion. He even taught them how to sing cowboy songs around the campfire at night in a voice that sounded a lot like a lonesome coyote howling at the moon. Pecos Bill was famous for his riding skills. He once rode a wild mustang or horse called the backbreaker that no one else could ride. But that story pales in comparison to the time he rode something that no other man had before. And I reckon no man ever will again, a cyclone. That's right. Pecos Bill lassoed a cyclone with his rattlesnake lasso and jumped on its rip-roaring back. The cyc cyclone spun furiously, trying to throw Bill off. It went spinning this way and that way across the deserts of Arizona, trying to knock Bill off by rising up into the air and digging down into the ground. Wait, wait. A cyclone? Isn't that a storm like a tornado? It sure is, Miss Brittany. <sighs> then I know that has to be an exaggeration. A man can't ride a tornado. That's great. You've identified another exaggeration. I'd say that you and the boys and girls at home are getting pretty good at this. Let's read the conclusion of our tall tale. Pecos Bill didn't let go until the cyclone spun itself out of energy. And by that time, the two of them had carved out a deep canyon. If you ever go to Arizona, you can still see that canyon today. It's called the Grand Canyon. Here's an image of the Grand Canyon with all the red rock layers. It's a famous natural landmark in America. Wow. What an amazing adventure Pecos Bill had. You're absolutely right, Miss Brittany. Can you name one that was an exaggeration? Well, I don't think Pecos Bill was really raised by coyotes. Exactly. That's an exaggeration. Boys and girls, what about the detail that Pecos Bill lassoed a cow with a snake? Do you think that was a realistic detail or an exaggeration? What do you think, Miss Brittany? I think it was an exaggeration that Pecos Bill lassoed a cow with a snake. Very good. And because of all these amazing adventures and exaggerated details, do you think tall tales are fiction or nonfiction? I would think fiction because although some of the details might seem realistic, tall tales include exaggerations that could not happen in real life. That's right. And the main character is often someone that seems larger than life and has amazing adventures. Boys and girls, which of the amazing adventures from the tall tale of Pecos Bill seems the most exciting to you? Let's now add some of these details to our chart. First, let's identify our main character. Boys and girls, who was the main character in our story today? That's right. If you said the main character was Pecos Bill, give yourself a pat on the back. Let's add that to our table. Now, think back to our map. What was the setting of the tall tale Pecos Bill? Boys and girls, do you remember? The setting is Texas in the frontier days. Great, let's add that to our table. To summarize the plot of our story, I'd say, Pecos Bill was a man who was raised by coyotes and became a cowboy who tamed wild animals and rode a cyclone. What a great summary. It hits the overall main events of the story. That's right. 
put it on our table. And we've already talked about realistic details and exaggerations. So let's decide if these next details are realistic or exaggerated and add them to our table. What about a man was raised by coyotes? Is that realistic or an exaggeration? I believe that is an exaggeration because it couldn't be possible in real life. Very good. How about people worked, whoops, people worked as cowboys and cowgirls. In which row would it belong? During the frontier days, and even now, people really did work as cowboys and cowgirls. So, that's a realistic detail. It sure is. So we'll put that on, that on the row titled, Realistic Details. And lastly, we have, a man used a snake to lasso a runaway cow. What do you think, Ms. Brittany? Is that a realistic detail or an exaggeration? Boys and girls, help me out. Which do you think it is? That's right. I believe that's an exaggeration. And you're right again, so we'll add it to our chart on the row labeled exaggerations. In our next lesson, we will read another tall tale and look at for some of these same elements of tall tales. Thank you for joining us today. All rights and credits from this lesson belong to Core Knowledge Language Arts. We would like to thank them for publicly sharing these materials. If you are interested in reading more about Pecos Bill, check out these books at your local library or online. Pecos Bill by Eric Blair or Pecos Bill retold and illustrated by Stephen Kellogg. Use what you have learned today. You may want to create a comic strip to retell the main events of the tall tale, Pecos Bill. Or act it out with your family. What a great idea. Thanks for joining us today. We'll see you again soon.